Rebuilding a very old horizontal steam engine, part 9. This is making the new crankshaft and getting the alignment right. If you've been watching the previous two episodes about making this crankshaft, you'll see how much effort's gone into making it. Not only is the main shaft stepped to accommodate the flywheel and the eccentric, and then a narrower part for the bearings, the crank web itself is stepped to avoid hitting the ledge at each side of the main base. If the diameter of the main shaft was the same all the way down, then it would be simple. You just make a shaft that goes through the crank web, is locked tight and in place and pinned, and then you cut out the centre section where my thumb is. Instant crankshaft, but no, this one had to be difficult. Here is the crankshaft and it's almost complete. It's currently in the lathe, one end in the chuck, the other end in the live centre. The two drills are just to make sure everything's in alignment. Here I'm using a dial test indicator again. I'll try and get it as near zero as possible. And then once I rotate the crankshaft, we'll see whether it's true. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. It's not moving at all, in fact. I'll put that down to beginner's luck. The two holes you see in the crank web are 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. These are going to be opened up to 3 16 of an inch in diameter, and two pins are going to be pressed in there and the pins in conjunction with the Loctite will make a very solid job. This new crankshaft is an improvement on the old one. The old one was damaged and positively dangerous. This one's not going to give way anytime soon. As you can see here in this clip, if I move the crankshaft around, there are 3 16 pins in the crank pin and the main shaft. Now the crankshaft is complete, I'll have a quick look at the bearings. The bearings are not bad, but they could do with a little bit of a clean-up. So what I'm doing is tightening down the main bearing caps, not over tightening, and I'm running a reamer through to clean them up, followed by a really good wipe with a cloth to get rid of any residue of bits of metal and bits of rubbish in there. I'm being quite thorough with the cloth because I don't want to leave any particles in there. I'll just drop a screw onto the bench. And now it's time to put the whole thing together. First thing to do is to oil the bearings thoroughly. This is some oil that I use in my airline, which will do the job for the moment. Plenty of it everywhere. Then I'm putting the crankshaft in position. And carefully nipping up the top caps. These bearings are not perfect to say the least, but they'll do the job. And they are adjustable, so I'm able to get a nice purchase on the crankshaft to stop it wobbling about. With the top caps tightened down, not over tightened, just nipped up, the crankshaft spins quite freely, which is a good thing. With the flywheel slid onto the crankshaft and the old key placed in the keyway, the crankshaft spins fine. It feels quite good. There are no real tight spots, maybe a tiny one at the top, but nothing to worry about, that will just bed in. The flywheel's a little bit wobbly, that's because it's not tight on the shaft. I'll deal with that later. And the engine's starting to take shape. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.